All right, today we are going to expand our conversation of the air and its circulation and now begin to discuss some of the elements that make up the weather. In this video, we are going to focus on wind, temperature, and pressure, including the difference between temperature and the heat. Here's a hint, they're not the same. This is our third video of a five-part series on air and weather. If you would like to view the other two videos, you can find their links down in the description below. Now, thanks for joining, now let's get started. To get us going, let's discuss the wind, which is often a pilot's best friend or our worst enemy. Now, the wind is really just a body of air that's in motion. As any body of motion, it has a mass, a direction of travel, and a speed of movement. We describe wind as coming from a direction, so if a wind is coming from the west, it is called a west wind. If it is blowing from the northeast, we call it a northeast wind. Unlike our friends that live on the ground while we have our heads up in the clouds, we must think of the air mass in three dimensions. Air masses move up and down in addition to left, right, and whatever direction they're coming from. The speed of the wind is stated in miles per hour or knots. In the United States, we are used to discussing speed in miles per hour, so a knot is a new concept for many people. But knots are very common in both nautical and aviation. Now, one knot is about 1.1 miles per hour, so they're pretty close. There's a scale that has been used since 1805 and is still heavily in use today. It is called the Beaufort scale. It has a range of 0 to 12, with 0 being completely calm, all the way to 12, which is hurricane force winds that leads to great violence and destruction. Now, at the end of this video, I will put up a chart of the Beaufort scale. Feel free to pause the screen to read through it. You can also look up the Beaufort scale on Wikipedia to learn more. If you are interested in aviation or maritime for that matter, I recommend that you try to practice using this scale. It will help you to put a wind speed to a tangible effect of that wind. Now we are going to be spending a lot of time in the next few lessons talking a lot more about the wind and the movement of air masses. As I said earlier, air masses can move up and down as much as coming from a specific direction. Gliders search for the rising air to raise their aircraft higher into the atmosphere without the additional force of thrust. In addition to rising verticals, the masses of air can also descend, and sometimes at great speeds. These sudden, rapid, and localized downflows of airs are often called microbursts. They can occur with little warning, causing significant turbulence when flying, or being very dangerous if near the ground. Now, many accidents in aviation are caused by flying into air that is traveling at a fast rate of speed towards the ground. Sometimes aircraft can't climb fast enough uh, you know, to outspeed the descending air. That can put the aircraft in a dangerous position very quickly. Now, the opposite is also true. Sometimes the air moves up at an incredible speed. This is often the case in summer and one of the keys in the formation of thunderstorms where warm air travels vertically at great speed into the upper portions of the atmosphere. Now in aviation, we often refer to winds as a tailwind, a headwind, or a crosswind. Now a tailwind is when the wind is coming from behind the aircraft or from the tail. We pilots like tailwinds because they allow us to travel over the ground faster. Now a headwind's coming in front of the aircraft. Now pilots typically, we don't like headwinds since they make us go slower over the ground. It takes us longer to get to our destinations. We do, however, like headwinds when we are taking off and landing, since it allows additional lift over the wings and lets us take off or land at a slower ground speed using less runway. A crosswind is what we usually have as pilots, and it means that the winds are coming not from just behind us or in front of us, but from the side of the aircraft. Imagine how a boat has to steer into the movement of the water to keep it going in a straight line. Now the airplane has the same exact thing. You have to turn into the wind in order to compensate for the moving air. One of the keys to learning how to be an effective pilot is to be able to understand and calculate the appropriate direction and speed to keep the aircraft traveling in the true direction. As we begin to move into our conversation of temperature, I want to briefly combine both wind and temperature, and it's called the wind chill. We probably all have examples we can think of where the air feels much colder than it is. This is caused because our skins develop a thin layer of air that is warmer than the surrounding air. This helps to keep our skin warmer when the air is cold. What the wind does is it takes away the barrier of warmer air near our skins. Now, the faster the wind is blowing, the faster it takes the warmth away from our skin. 
Now this makes it harder for our body to keep the skin warm and makes the air feel colder than it would without the wind. Now when we talk about temperature, it really is important to understand the difference between temperature and heat. I want you to think of temperature as the movement of just one air molecule. Now we're going to represent that here by this one marble. Okay. So here I have the air mass. And so I've, as you remember from our previous conversations, the air is roughly 80% nitrogen. So I've got 80 orange marbles here. Um, it's roughly 19% oxygen. So I've got the oxygen here and the blue ones. Now it's 1% other stuff. And then the other stuff largely is argon, um, but other things like carbon dioxide, things of that nature. So when we talk about temperature, we're talking about one air molecule. We're not talking about all, we're talking about one. Now, when we talk about heat, we're talking about all of it. So if I were to take all of these marbles, and I'm gonna pause this as I pour the marbles in here. So temperature is the speed at which a single molecule is moving. Now if this isn't moving at all, we call that absolute zero. As the molecules move faster, we say that it has more kinetic energy and its temperature increases. Now that we have identified that a single molecule's motion defines the temperature, if we look at a collection of all of the molecules in the air mass, we are now talking about heat. As an example, a spacecraft traveling in the thermosphere is working in an atmosphere that has a very high temperature, sometimes as high as 2,000 degrees. But there are so few molecules at that high an altitude that there is very little heat. So it is crucial that you do not equate temperature with heat. They can mean very different things for you, especially as you climb higher in the atmosphere. Now heat is transferred in four primary ways. Heating by direct contact is called conduction. When you stand on a hot driveway with your bare feet and they start to burn, that is conduction. Now convection is the transfer of heat through vertical motion. This is the hot air rising. Now if convection is the vertical movement of hot air, then advection is the lateral transfer of heat as the warm air mass moves sideways. Now finally, radiation is the transfer of heat energy from the sun through magnetic waves. Now all four of these processes of heat transfer are important to the weather process on the planet. Now for more information on these processes, please check out our second video in the series where we discuss air circulation in greater detail. Now before we move on to talking about pressure, I want to talk about human factors when it comes to temperature. Now as human beings, we have a very delicate body that needs a specific environment to survive and flourish in. Now when the environment is too hot or too cold and our bodies cannot compensate fast enough, we can develop numerous physical problems such as heat cramps, dizziness, lightheadedness, and frostbite. Left untreated, these can develop into a more dangerous condition which could lead to death. Therefore, it's crucial that you keep hydrated, wear the appropriate clothing, and you control your activity level in extreme heat, as well as monitor you and your friends to be on the lookout for the beginnings of these issues. Now, if you are a pilot, you must be on guard, because you could also be in an old airplane that doesn't have a good heater, it leaks a lot of wind, thus making you very cold. Coming from the north, I have learned this the hard way, and this could cause you to have some poor decision-making skills as you're sitting there sh shivering while you're trying to fly an airplane. So err on the side of caution and take care of yourselves. Now that our public service announcement is done, let's talk about our last topic for today, and that is going to be pressure. Let's go back to our marbles, as they're going to represent the air molecules. Like these marbles, each molecule has weight. Now when added together, that combined weight presses down on the Earth in what we call atmospheric pressure. This pressure is defined by how many molecules there are in a given space. A lot of molecules would be high pressure, less molecules would be lower pressure. Now near the surface of the planet, the molecules are very dense. Most often a molecule doesn't travel more than a millionth of an inch before colliding with another molecule. Therefore, the molecules in an air mass are constantly interacting with each other. Now while we have scientific instruments that can help accurately tell us what the pressure is, our bodies are also attuned to changes in pressure, especially our ears and our sinuses. Sometimes we can have difficulty adjusting to rapid changes in pressure, causing discomfort 
or severe headaches in some individuals. As pilots, important to pay attention to these pressure changes as you or your passengers may react negatively to them. This is especially true if somebody has a cold or a blockage in the nose or ears that would make it difficult to equalize that change of pressure. Now, if you have a bad cold, you may want to talk to a doctor before you're flying. Now, as the saying goes, it's better to be on the ground wishing you were in the air than in the air wishing you were on the ground. Now, one of the scientific instruments that we use to measure atmospheric pressure is the mercury barometer, an aneroid barometer or an aneroid graph. Now, aneroid barometers are fast and easy to read. People keep these on the wall. They're usually little round things. Now, a mercury barometer looks more like a thermometer, but instead of a bottom part of the glass being sealed and measuring the temperature, it sits in a, sits in a bath of mercury. You can't get these anymore because nobody wants you to play with mercury. Now, the weight of the atmosphere pushes down on the liquid mercury, which is forced up into the glass tube. The higher the weight of the atmosphere, the more mercury goes into the tube and gives us the higher reading. Now, weather stations, they want to keep recordings of the atmospheric pressure, and they do so with an aneroid graph. It's very similar to the aneroid barometer we talked about earlier, but it's connected to a pen that writes across a revolving drum that records the findings. Now, in our next video, we are going to continue this discussion to also include a better understanding of both moisture and the clouds. So I hope you'll join us. Now, I love hearing from everyone. Let me know if you are interested in becoming a pilot. If you need any help with that, I can help with. Uh, if you have any suggestions for contents, I would love to hear it. If you are a CAP member, please let us know what squadron you are in the comments section down below. And lastly, if you are a CAP cadet, and you are working on Module 3, Chapter 3 for Aerospace Dimensions, please pause the video at the end of the review for the important terms. These are going to be important for your test. All right, well, thanks, everybody. I hope you had a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.